A scathing new documentary is being shown attacking the world's largest retailer and employer, Walmart. Robert, I sat down and watched the film, and it was devastating about this company. Thumbs up for me. You know, I thumbs up for me, too. I don't go to Walmart because the cheaper prices are not as important to me as the thought that I'm getting those cheaper prices at the cost right. of the lives and labor of Walmart employees. Almost two years I've been working for the company. I believe it was a year or 18 months, I'm not sure which, to get medical insurance. And about eight months into my employment with Ralph's, I, I got an infection and I, I avoided going to the doctors because I didn't have medical insurance and I couldn't afford it. The infection got worse and it got up in behind my eye and started swelling my eye shut. And it got to the point where I had to go to the emergency room. And once, once I got there, I didn't realize it, but they had to do all kinds of extensive tests and whatnot, and it, the bill ended up being uh, close to $8,000. So I'm falling farther and farther and farther behind, and it's just really getting really tough for me to, to make ends meet, you know, hence I, to the point I had to go file Chapter 7 today, um, bankruptcy, and uh, I'm having a hard time dealing with the stress of, of the uh, creditors coming after me. and. You know, how am I going to live from day to day? I don't, I just don't know. I'm scared. You know, and I'm, that's just being brutally honest. I, I'm scared. You know, I'm a 42 year old man and I'm, I'm almost in tears here. I've worked for the company for 20 years, you know, um, and uh, paid really well, you know. And I was definitely getting paid a lot more than most of my friends who ended up in the factories of Vernon. And, you know, with a little bit of hard work and, and, and scrimping our pennies away and stuff, we were able to, to buy a home, you know, and, and, and get our foot in at the, that lower level of the, of the middle class, you know. I consider myself blessed, you know. But, uh, over the years, the industry has drastically changed. And the next thing you know, I'm working for this, this huge corporation. As these companies became more and more and more profitable, you know, they made more and more and more inroads into our, into our wages and into our benefits and into our, you know, our, our healthcare package and stuff. And so we get up to this point where people are actually seriously contemplating going to fast food working in a fast food uh, chain because it pays better, um, that's, uh, that's, that's tragic. And that's what puzzles me to this day that a company that big can, you know, that profitable, you know, um, why it wants it all, you know? And, um, you know, I, I think they just, that they just, that they're just greedy pigs, you know? That's, uh, that's what I boil it down to, you know? The last contract alone, okay, we didn't get a raise. We had no cost of living. We were out five and a half months. What I paid $28 for for medical, after the contract, I paid $170 to $185 for it, without a raise. Now, I'm not saying that's the union's fault. I'm saying because we were out five and a half months, people were hungry. They were very hungry, and that's why they got away with it. You know, how long do you go? But it's not going to happen this time. People are so ready to walk. You know, you're doing other people's work. You're not getting their money. They're not offering any six days, no overtime. The medical is high, so we've taken a decrease in pay. This is 2007. You know, no cost of living in how many years? No raises in 10 years? 
When I came to California, this was a good industry to be in. It was actually a job. Now it's like, you know, there's, there's people in the industry that are on food stamps, welfare, can't make a living at it. You know, we thought the food industry was safe and secure. Not happening. All they're interested in is lining their pockets. Hi, uh, my name is Christopher Sprinkle. I'm calling from... Hi, this is Robert Greenwald and Christopher Sprinkle. We're calling Brave from... Brave New Films in Los Angeles, and I was calling... We are documentary filmmakers, and we're working on a film about uh, Ralph's and a few of the other supermarkets, schedule an interview, if at all possible, with Mr. Steve Bird, uh, the CEO there. And we particularly wanted to talk to Mr. Dillon about the fact that the workers haven't gotten a raise in five years and he made six, six million dollars last year. They do deserve privileged wages, but 52 times the amount of the average worker is something that I just can't live with. need to try and schedule an interview with Mr. Noddle. Uh, this is the third phone call. Your call is important to us. Please hold. And we're very interested in hearing about the $11,896,091 that he has made and how that, how he frankly justifies that in terms of the workers who've gone five years now without a raise. These companies are claiming they're losing money hand over fist when their quarterly reports and their stock prices are reflecting quite the opposite. 